السلام عليكم uh, we started uh, our chapter about the cross cultural uh, management of the global uh, corporations in the uh, global world and uh, different markets different cultures uh, we started with the uh, first topic the cross cultural management we uh, see what is the meaning of culture <clears throat> and the uh, different uh, dimensions of uh, culture the uh, corporate uh, dimension the industrial dimension and the uh, professional culture and the national or ethnic culture and uh, then we uh, move to the next uh, topic which is the uh, national culture we said that uh, for the systematic analysis of national cultural differences in the business management context there is uh, four main streams of research we started with the uh, ethnological research which is a silent uh, language in France and we talk about the uh, different silent uh, languages like the perception of time the perception of space the uh, language of material goods and the agreement the friendship and the uh, context now uh, we are going to uh, continue uh, the th uh, these four uh, main streams about the national uh, culture the second one is the uh, managerial values and assumptions uh, there are three uh, main uh, items in this uh, mainstream the first one is the work related values differences the differences in the values that relates to work Schoolers uh, in this field asked uh, some questions uh, like a uh, survey and so related to the managers preferences what the uh, manager uh, managers in different cultures and so on prefer in management styles and work values and related uh, answers to national their national origin so they found that national cultures differed according to four main dimensions the power distance, the individualism, the uncertainty, uh, avoidance, and the uh, masculinity. The first one is the power distance dimension. So in the uh, extent to which people in certain societies accept uh, inequality in power distribution or, on contrary, have a somewhat uh, egalitarian view of power uh, distribution. So you can see in high power distance uh, societies will accept hierarchical control and respect the authority as for example in a country like Malaysia in other societies or other cultures uh, like the egalitarian societies they will have more democratic uh, view of social control with no particular uh, reverence for high ranking functions as in uh, Denmark or Northern Europe this is the first uh, dimension. The second dimension is the individualism, uh, which characterizes a culture in which individuals look after their own or their immediate relative interests. So when we talk about individualism, we're talking about the individuals that only uh, concern with their own interest or their immediate relative interest. This is the case in most Western cultures. This will translate into individual assertiveness and initiative in business contexts. So this is how the different cultures affect the uh, business management. Uh, in uh, contrast, there is the collectivist cultures. On the other hand, will uh, put the group interests, not the individual uh, interests, the group interests above the individuals. And the uh, consensus and harmony will be preferred to assertiveness for example, in the East uh, Asian uh, cultures, commonly uh, they put the society ahead of the individual. Uh, now we talk about the two dimensions, the power distance and uh, individualism. We can see the mapping of the countries on the power distance and the individualism scales. We can see the power distance in the vertical axis and individualism in the uh, horizontal axis. We can see uh, the countries that have uh, uh, low degree of individualism and high degree of power distance 
like Malaysia, Mexico, Indonesia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Arab countries, and so on, and other countries that have high uh, rate of individualism and low rate of power distance, like UK, USA, Canada, Germany, Sweden, and so on. And finally, the countries that have high uh, rate of individualism and high rate of power distance, like the Latin European hierarchical individualists like France, Italy, Spain, and so on. The third uh, dimension is the uncertainty avoidance, to avoid ambiguity or uncertainty. So it is typical of societies where ambiguity and unpredictability is not accepted in these societies or in this culture. And there is a, a continual search to uh, codify and plan and regulate the environment like Japan, Spain, and so on. So they don't accept the uh, uncertain or unpredictable uh, situations. They have to codify everything and plan everything and so on. That affects the business management uh, for sure. So at the opposite, one will find social groups where uh, the tolerance and the risk taking is accepted and rewarded like in the United States or Sweden they are more uh, tolerant and taking uh, more uh, risks and so on so they don't uh, uh, mind the ambiguity and uncertainty the uh, fourth dimension is uh, masculinity which we, we don't mean in the here the uh, the literal uh, meaning of uh, masculinity and femininity uh, masculinity for uh, the male uh, tendency and uh, femininity is female tendency but it refers uh, masculinity refers to the high value given to assertive competitive behavior okay but in femininity approach on the other hand it refers to societies where the quality of life uh, non-aggressive behavior interpersonal relations and concern for the weak uh, are dominant values. Uh, the uh, managerial uh, values and uh, assumptions, we have the second thing, uh, the uh, value orientations differences. So we talk about the uh, work-related differences. Now we have the value orientations differences. Uh, in this uh, case, the scholars identify six value orientations that uh, differentiate cultures and impact on the way countries uh, conceive organizations. They found significant differences in national groups, as most Asian cultures, uh, cultures, for instance, differ from Western cultures in all the dimensions related to the value orientations. Uh, we can see as a uh, rule-based versus the relation-based behavior, individualism versus uh, communitarianism, objective analytical reasoning versus the holistic and uh, synthetic reasoning, status and respect achieved by doing versus by being, knowledge of right or wrong arises from within versus from society, uh, sequential time uh, versus uh, synchronous time, we can see in more uh, details and uh, examples in this schedule. The first uh, value orientation, for example, the uh, rule-based uh, behavior, uh, like in uh, Nordic countries, we say that Nordic countries like uh, the Northern European countries like Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and so on, and the uh, circumstance or relation-based behavior. So we have rule-based behavior and relation-based behavior, so, uh, such as Southeast Asia, China, and African countries. The other value orientation, uh, for example, the individual rights are supreme. The individual rights and the individual performance are valued, like in Western countries. In the Asian countries, we can see the group's rights are supreme, and the harmony and cohesion are more valued. Third value orientation, we can see the objective analytical uh, reductionist reasoning, like in Germany and France. And in the Middle East and Asia, we can see the holistic and uh, synthetic reasoning. The fourth value orientation, 
you can see the status and respect achieved by doing what you do like in the United States but in other countries like Malaysia and China the status and respect achieved by being who you are the, the fifth uh, orient value orientation like knowledge of right and wrong what is right and wrong it lies inside the individual it's like the guilt culture how you feel guilty and so on for example in the Protestant uh, countries but in other countries like confession uh, societies uh, which are uh, affected by uh, influenced by uh, uh, confucius uh, uh, concepts and thoughts and so on the knowledge of right and wrong in these cultures comes from the society but not it doesn't lie inside the individual but it comes from the society yani it seems uh, what is considered shame uh, in this uh, society in this finally uh, the value orientation of uh, time as uh, time is an arrow in the uh, western countries it is consumed in one direction like arrow in one direction so when it's come out it doesn't go back uh, this is in western uh, cultures uh, but in the uh, other uh, countries like arabic or african or asian uh, cultures time is like a circle so it can uh, come back uh, again anytime so uh, sure these uh, different uh, concepts about culture and value orientation affects the uh, business uh, management uh, as they uh, can uh, affect the uh, punctuality and the uh, how uh, you look uh, at time uh, for example or the perception uh, of time it's uh, affected the uh, deadlines and so and the respect of the uh, timing and so on the third element in managerial values and assumptions is the management assumptions differences at the cultural heritage for example the national cultures have basic managerial and organizational assumptions um, for example on the power on the structure on the clarity of rules and the hierarchy so there is also some basic or management assumptions that uh, differs from a country to another <clears throat> for example most managers seems to be more motivated by obtaining power than by achieving objectives like latin european countries nationals italian french spain they agree with this statement while others like danish swedes and norwegians disagree also, it is important for uh, some managers to have at hand precise answers to most of the questions that uh, a subordinate may raise about their work. For example, in ASEAN and Latin uh, nationals strongly support uh, this statement, while the Anglo-Saxon and Nordic cultures do not. And in order to have efficient working relationships, it is often necessary to bypass the hierarchical lines. Nordics and Anglo-Saxons agree while the Chinese, Italians, Spains, or Indonesians strongly disagree. An organization structure in which subordinates have two direct bosses should be avoided at all costs. In the Chinese, Italian, French, Indonesian, they reject this organizational mode. While in Americans or Swedish uh, accept the idea of working for two bosses, no problem. So the main reason for having a hierarchical structure is so that everybody knows who has authority over whom. So these results constantly uh, show that basic managerial and organizational assumptions concerning power, structure, clarity of rules, and hierarchy are still deeply embedded in national cultures. So these differences in assumptions pose a challenge to global firms that need to organize lead and motivate people of diverse cultural heritage. So scholars even found that cultural differences in managerial assumptions were not reduced as a result of working for the same multinational companies. Thus, they rejecting the idea that national cultures converge thanks to the corporate cultures. The third main stream is the country clusters. 
by uh, country uh, clusters, we mean that this approach consists of grouping countries, a group of country, a group of countries. This is a cluster according to their degree of geographical uh, or linguistic or religious or historical and so social proximity. As we see, Muslim, for example, the Arab country, it is a cluster. The uh, country that uh, speak the same uh, uh, language and so on. Uh, another type of clustering was developed by some scholars who grouped countries in what they call civilizations, according to civilizations, uh, countries that share the same civilization, which is based on the language, religion, the values, they share the same beliefs and institutional and social structures. These scholars identified eight modern civilizations which are the Cynic, Japanese, Hindu, Islamic, Orthodox, Latin America, African, and Western. The Cynic uh, civilization is the societies of China and Chinese communities, as well as Vietnam, Korea. Uh, Confucianism is a major culture in these countries, trade for this civilization. The Japanese civilization also is a distinctive civilization identified with only one country. The Hindu civilization, essentially in, in India, Bangladesh, uh, Sri Lanka. The Islamic uh, civilization encompasses most of the Middle East and North Africa, as well as Indonesia and part of Malaysia. The Orthodox civilizations, which is centered in Russia and Central Europe. The Latin American civilization, which is Central and South America. The African civilization from Central Africa to South Africa. And finally, the Western civilizations, which contains North America, Western Europe, and Australia. The fourth element or uh, mainstream in the national uh, culture uh, is the economic culture. And these are the uh, six main economic cultures. We have the Anglo-American uh, economic culture, the German, Nordic European, the French Latin European, Japanese, the Korean, and the overseas Chinese. Cultures have a pervasive effect on social and economic and political institutions and on the competitive behavior. So scholars explain differences in competitive and business behavior between Latin European countries and Northern and Anglo countries as caused by the influence of religions. In Northern Europe, uh, Protestantism uh, encouraging individual achievement leading to free enterprises and favoring uh, the uh, emergence of modern capitalism, while the uh, Catholic in Spain and to a certain extent in France induced state control. So we can see here how the uh, different uh, culture or the influence of religion can affect the economic system. And the uh, concept of the Protestant uh, which the Protestant and Catholic is uh, two different categories in Christianity. So in Protestant, they encourage the individual achievement, which leads to capitalism. But Catholic, they uh, uh, induce to the state uh, control uh, instead of uh, capitalism. So several scholars have identified various forms of business systems, economic cultures, or forms of capitalism, that explain international variations in institutional governance and competitive behaviors. The uh, economic cultures also vary according to three sets of parameters. We have the culture, uh, institutional fabric, business system. When we talk about culture, when we talk about rationality, authority, identity, when we talk about institutional fabric, there is the financial capital, the human capital, social capital. Also, the business system, there is the ownership system, the networking system, and management system. So, when we talk about the culture set that constitutes the foundation of social values, this is the culture set. Social values composed of three components rational, which describes the way societies set objectives and the importance they attach uh, to formal systems and processes in setting objectives. Also, authority, which describes how societies set rules for vertical order, where the legitimate source of power is, and identity, which describes 
the rules of horizontal order what makes citizens stick together second we have the institutional fabric that represents the organization development and allocation of resources made up of three components we have the financial capital its formation and its allocation the human capital how human skills are developed and the social capital which is the way trust is created among the economic agents the third element in economic culture is the business system that presides over the way economic activities are governed made up of the ownership system who are the primary owner of the enterprises also the networking system how do companies and business agents relate to each other and the management system how are employees induced to cooperate so now we finish the uh, second topic the national uh, culture the uh, next lesson inshallah we are going to finalize this uh, chapter and uh, by talking about the impact of the uh, culture on the global uh, management uh, text so uh, thank you and goodbye and good luck